We've talked about design, we've talked about the powertrain, let's talk about driving, but we're going to talk about driving a little different now. I've got Jonathan Bomarito with me, and I remember seeing Jonathan race back in the Mazda Power Atlantic Championship a few years back, and, you know, your career's gone through some changes, but let's back up. How did you get into racing? You grew up in Monterey right next to Mazda Raceway. Yeah, I did. Like you said, Dean, grew up, born and raised in Monterey. Uh, my dad used to take me to the racetrack as a kid. Uh, we used to live just over the hill, so we'd literally ride bicycles to the back of the corkscrew, watch all the, the greats uh, coming down the famous corkscrew at Mazda Raceway, and I was hooked uh, and uh, just wanted to submerge myself in, in the racing world as, as much as I could. Fortunately, I had a, you know parents that were able to do so and, and shared my passion and bought me a go-kart and you know worked my way up the Mazda ladder. So you started, how many years of karting did you do? I did, uh, I did about eight years of go-karting uh, at a very competitive level, traveling quite a bit, mainly in Northern California, but traveled, you know, towards the end there, the last few years all over, the, all over North America, really. And then how did you end up, you taught at Skip Barber Racing School, did you not? Yeah, towards the end of my go-karting career, I, I got my foot in the door and I started teaching. I, was, I think I was probably one of the youngest instructors to start out there. I think it was yeah. 17 or 18 started flagging up in the corkscrew for the school and um, just kind of proved myself, got my foot in the door and have been teaching there for about 10 years. So what was your progression? You went from karts, then did you do some of the Skip Barber racing? Yeah, I did uh, mainly karting uh, initially. Uh, did a little bit of Skip, I did my first racing school was with Skip Barber at Mazda Raceway, Laguna Seca. Uh, did a little bit of their regional racing series, um, the Formula Ford 2000, um, a lot of, uh, Formula Atlantic when, yeah. when it was Mazda powered and uh, Formula Mazda as well. And then recently, the last three seasons, uh, switched from that Formula car, you know, side of the world to sports car racing, running the Mazda RX-8 with Speed Source. So was that, with you, was that your very first ever sports car race when you ran with Speed Source? Yes, yeah, pretty much. I uh, first professional sports car race, definitely. And so all the racing you've done before had been one driver, one car. Yes. Now all of a sudden you got a teammate. Yeah, it's a lot different. You know, pit stops, long endurance races, bigger, heavier car, teammate trying to gel with them. Um, you know, for strategy, what you like setup wise in the car, working with the engineers. So whole nother element to it, but. I've been having the time of my life uh, racing sports cars. Uh, from the team side of things, I like the teammate, uh, and the racing is just a lot of fun. And now you got a new challenge coming up because when you joined Speed Source, that car was pretty well developed. Yes. And now you get to work with Sylvan and the team to develop an all new car. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a first for me. Taking the, they're literally taking the car from the ground up, building it, and we're doing all the de development, and we're going to be on the racetrack here really soon. So. They've been putting in countless hours. The engine has been on the dyno nonstop, um, building, the, building the whole race car. Putting, now they have to put it all together, which we're almost there. In about another week or so, we're going to be on the racetrack. And you've got some, you know, just amazing confidence in your crew. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, these guys are amazing. The, like you say, the, as it, when I stepped in, the, the RX-8 had already kind of been tried and true, polished, and very seamless. Um, but, but I don't foresee any big hiccups. The, the, like you say, they're such professionals and very me meticulous and, um, you know, just awesome at what they do. So, uh, you know, there, there'll be a little bit of teething issues here and there, but, you know, we have the 24 hours, one of the most grueling races in the world coming up at the end of January. So we need to get it, you know, if there are little hiccups, we'll get them figured out quick. How, how was it when you did your first 24 hour? I've heard some interesting observations for drivers. What was the biggest misconception or what was better or worse than you thought? Yeah, it's just it, you, you really don't realize how long a 24-hour period is until you have loud race cars running around for 24 hours straight. So, you know, uh, from a driver's standpoint, getting, you know, now that I've done quite a few of them, um, getting to know what your body needs and likes in between driving, you know, how much you need to sleep, how much you need to replenish, uh, you know, water and fluids and food. And, you know, just trying to separate yourself when you get out of the car, if you can turn that switch off to, to relax and get a little sleep and replenish all your fuels and your, that your body needs, because it, that adrenaline's going. So if you, you know, stay, you know, wired like you are when you get out, when you get out of the car, 
you're not going to be able to sleep. You're not going to be able to do the things you need to do for 14 hours later at the end of the race when they really need you. And ultimately, you've got three other teammates in the 24-hour race, but on the races you've done, did you always drive six hours or did you drive a few, few hours more? You're yeah. the young guy. Yeah, I think um, the first time I did it, I think I was probably right around the six-hour mark, but the last few, um, I, I, I think I've been a, a bit more than that. But, you yeah. know, we... What's nice is the last, well, every year I've done it, we've had such a strong driver lineup. We always run four drivers, that, which is nice because you can really rely on your teammates. Not one person has to take the whole thing on their shoulders and, and you know, do 14 hours or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all very competitive pace-wise, and, you know, that, that's nice. You, you, you have confidence in your co-drivers knowing that you can go to sleep. The car's going to be there when you get back in good condition like you gave it to them. Well, it's funny. Hinchcliffe, after he did his first 24-hour with you, his biggest observation, he goes, I never saw my teammates. Because yeah. the team was so disciplined when he got out of yeah. the car, yeah. quick debrief, go get his fluids, and go get him to bed, you know, and everything to where he can be rested for his next stint. He never talked to any of the other drivers in 24 yeah. hours. It is, it is crazy like that because you, you, everybody's on, we, you know, we talk about this for hours in advance and we're all on our routines and it, it's just like a, it's just like clockwork. We have, a, you know, somebody bringing us to the motorhome, back to the grid, you know, to the pit and you, you really don't see your, you, you see them for about five seconds as they're getting out and you're getting in. <laughs> so. Well, let's uh, switch gears here for a second. We're sitting in the simulator here of Mazda Raceway within the Mazda display. And so we're, it's kind of a ride along. This one's yes. not a driving simulator, but uh, I think they're gonna get set up to where we can have it with no sound. You can narrate us. How many, how many laps have you done at Mazda Raceway, do you think? I you could probably, I won't do it today, but I could probably tell you where we're at on the track if I had my eyes closed just from the undulations of this simulator. Well, I think the Skip Barber is starting <laughs> so, to joke that they could probably drive yeah. the track blindfold. Yeah, I don't, hopefully probably. no one's tried that. No. <laughs> but uh, this, yeah. when we get fired up here, tell us about the turns and what's, you know, is the corkscrew the most difficult? Where, where's okay. the passing opportunities? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be happy to, to, to run us through a lap. I mean, this is a, a world famous racetrack, so this is going to be a lot of fun. I think here well, we go. When you first drove the track, was it in a cart? I first drove uh, the track for the uh, racing school that I did out there. And then, like you say, uh, thousands and thousands of miles. Um, actually in Mazda products yeah. uh, from the Skip Barber Racing School. Well, do you miss the Formula cars at all, or are you, you a sports car guy now? I think I'm pretty ingrained into the sports car world now. It, it it's really is fun. Okay, we're starting to roll here. And we've just crested, basically, start, finish, and you're heading down the hill. This is actually pretty steep, heading down into the Andretti hairpin turn two. It's one of the hardest braking zones on the pat on the track. And this is a double apex corner. Yeah. So you're really trying to get your eyes looking around the corner as much as you can. It's always an upshift up to third gear usually. Turn three, uh, it's very flat. It's a very tricky corner. Um, it's a later apex than you would think, and it's an important run off the corner. Into turn four, it's a, one of the quicker corners on the track that leads on to probably the highest percentage best passing area, in my opinion, down into turn five. Uh, if you can get a good run off of turn four, you can outbreak another car into turn five here. Turn five is, an, is, is a really fun corner. As you can see, it kind of starts using the banking there. So the car slides a little bit on entry and you really just predict that it's gonna catch you at the exit. Turn six is the corner where, you know, gets actually one of the most tricky corners on the track. That dip in that compression that leads up to the corkscrew here is very tricky and very important corner. And we're coming up to the, the famous corkscrew here. You come up over this crest, the car gets very light, settles back down, you turn in blind here, you cannot see the road. You get wheel spin over the top, you, you fall you know, a couple of stories very quickly and immediately upshifting down into this, one of the fastest corners on the track, if not the fastest, downhill turn nine into turn 10. Again, it's just one after another, very, very busy. You have to be very precise and have a good flow. This is another good passing zone, hard braking, slowest corner on the track, turn 11, and you really have to get good wheel, get good run off of the corner, trying not to get wheel spin onto the main straightaway here. Going up through the gears, up over the rise, and there we go. 
Oh, they don't want to do that on the racetrack, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of fun. I mean, Mazda Raceway is one of my favorite tracks, and, you know, it really is. Uh, is the experience that much different when you were in, let's say, the Atlantic car versus going through it in uh, the RX-8 or next year in the Mazda 6? Yeah, I mean, it. Um, it's different as far as some of the corner speeds, you know, higher downforce yeah. car comparatively, but... You know, what you do from in the race car, the curbs that you use, how to balance the car in certain areas is all very, very similar. So, okay. you know, what I learned from the track um, years back in formula cars, trans a lot of it translated into sports car racing. Well, what I learned when I went through the driving school there, I needed to keep make my uh, living outside <laughs> of the cockpit. Yeah. So that's why I do what I do and yeah. you do what you do. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, it is hard. You know, it's, it's, it's not something that any professional driver can just they were good at it automatically. It doesn't doesn't happen that way. It's it's countless uh, seat time, hours in the yeah. car, and developing your skill. It, it um, yeah. there's a lot of little on un you know, that that yeah. you wouldn't know from the outside. Yeah. Well, thank you. We will thank see you, you in Daytona before thank the race, you. and hopefully in Victory Circle, you okay. can get a, that's uh, your Rolex. This the is this is. And uh, <laughs> you know you don't just buy one of those. He won that. So. Uh, yep. We're going for another. That's for sure. So. so can I get dibs on your next Rolex? <laughs> yeah, I think there's uh, a long line. Yeah, there is. There is. <laughs> Thank you.